Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Anali Harrell, and my group this afternoon consists of Aries Abdul and Celine Dino. Our topic this afternoon is what is validity? The types and ways teachers can increase it. I will now pass you over to Celine Dino, who will be leading us on the article summary, the article titled Validation of Educational Assessments a primer for simulation and beyond. Good afternoon, my name is Celine Dino and this evening we will be looking at a summary on the article Validation of Educational Assessments, a primer for simulation and beyond. This article focuses on the provision of a primer on assessment validation for educators and education researchers. Validation refers to the process of collecting validity evidence to evaluate the appropriateness of the interpretations, uses, and decisions based on assessment results. Validation of educational assessments is critically important for at least two reasons. Firstly, those using an assessment must be able to trust the results as validation gives a judgment of trustworthiness and validity will depend on the intended application and the context. Secondly, educators are responsible for sifting among the many assessment instruments and tools to find one that is logistic and practical. Classical validation, validation identified three different types of validity content, construct, and criterion. Contemporary frameworks view validity as a hypothesis and the evidence is collected to either support or refute the validity hypothesis. There are two stages of argument in the validation process, an upfront interpretation use argument and a final validity argument. To ensure a practical approach is taken in validation, the following steps must be taken. Define the pros interpretation. Make the intended decisions. Define the interpretation use argument and prioritize needed validity evidence. Identify students' instruments and if needed, create a new instrument. Appraise existing evidence and collect new evidence as needed. Formulate or synthesize the validity argument in relation to the interpretation use argument. And lastly, make a judgment. Does the evidence support the intended use? In validation, there are some common mistakes that we must avoid. These will include creating a new assessment every time, failure to use a validation framework, making expert novice comparisons the crux of the validity argument, focusing on the easily accessible validity evidence rather than the most important ones, focusing on the instruments rather than score inter interpretations and uses, label and instruments as validated, failure to synthesize or critique the validity evidence. I'll now pass you to my colleague Aries, who will take us through the rest of the article. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Aries Abdul, and I am here to discuss with you five ways in which validity can be used in the classroom. In education, teachers, while wildly educated and are mostly prepared, have little assessment preparation training. Furthermore, teachers are not fortunate to have a lot of time to evaluate and develop their tests. However, testing must be done. So subsequently, test development must be done. In light of this, there are a variety of methods teachers can take to ensure the validity of assessments. One step to guarantee validity 
would be to assess the results of a given assignment by peers. Assignments made by a teacher should be reviewed by others in the field, preferably those who have experience and training for assessment development. Another point to consider is the possibility that test scores may not show proof of the intended outcome. Sometimes the most research assessments that have been created by specialists have issues. This would suggest that tests that were created by teachers fall into this category and should analyze the assessments for any unforeseen results. We may also use a table of specification or a TOS. The purpose of this table is to recognize the specific content areas being tested to guarantee that it is representative of the items on the assessment. The TOS allows teachers to focus on the areas which are centered around the vital sections of the content and mark the areas based on the significance of that content. Simply put, the TOS attempts to keep all valid data from the assessment covered and weighted accordingly. Moving on, teachers must create assessments before creating the instructional unit. This method ensures that teachers plan what is important and what students should understand and do. This in turn helps to ensure content validity. Teachers should adjust their lessons to guarantee that students become familiar with the content. An example of how this would be employed is in the Standard 2 curriculum for Agricultural Science, specifically item 1.1.1, where it says, explain the main steps in growing plants employing good environmental practices. How this is implemented is, is the teacher would develop a weekly report assignment for students to do. This works because it is tailored to the outcomes in the curriculum. For example, 1A, grow plants using good environmental practices and under elaborations, sequence the main steps from land preparation to growing plants. Over the specified times, of duration for the report, students would have understood how to do steps for growing a plant as well as how to develop the land using good environmental practices. This is a result of the teacher having developed the assessment, the weekly report, prior to content creation and delivery. Students would have gained the knowledge to develop the reports from the in-class teaching and practical experience of having to grow their own plants. The final step is to assess the report based on what has been taught in class so as to provide accurate feedback on students' performance and understanding. One more method is that teachers should provide more than one opportunity for students to prove their understanding of content. Final exams and projects are limited to a single score and less likely to be reliable and may not be as valid. However, having a higher frequency of incremental assessments may prove to be more beneficial and valid. Using this in the classroom may be by the use of low-stakes quizzes by employing sites like Socrative, Quizlet, and Kahoot. A teacher may use content-directed questions to see how much students really understand. Another method, which is referred to as alternative assessments, can be used. For example, Students can create a letter to explain the main idea of a subject or draw a sketch to visually represent what was taught in class. This option allows a teacher to use a checklist based on relevant content and measure the degree to which students answer the question. Furthermore, it caters to multiple intelligences. Students may be able to express themselves better using different formats to complete assignments. In conclusion, the validation of educational assessments, a primer for simulation and beyond, 
The article states that validation refers to the process of collecting validity evidence to evaluate the appropriateness of the interpretations, uses, and decisions based on assessment results. Reasons why validation of educational assessments is critically important. Persons using an assessment must be able to trust the results as validation gives a judgment of trustworthiness, while validity will depend on the intended application and context. Educators are responsible for shift sifting among the many assessment instruments and tools to find one that is logistic and practical. There are three types of validity, content, construct, and criterion. There are two stages of argument in the validation process, an upfront interpretation use argument, a final validity argument. There are steps in a practical approach to validation. We must define the proposed interpretation, make an intended decision, define the interpretation use agreement, and prioritize need validity evidence. Identify students' instruments and, if needed, create a new instrument. Appraise existing evidence and collect new evidence as needed. Formulate or synthesize the validity argument in relation to the interpretation use argument. Make a judgment. Does the evidence support the intended use? We move on to common mistakes to avoid in validation. Creating a new assessment every time. Failure to use a validation framework. Making expert novice comparisons. The curl of the validity argument. Focusing on the easily accessible validity evidence rather than the most important. Focus on the instrument rather than the score interpretations and use. Label an instrument as validated. Failure to synthesize or critique the validity evidence. Five ways validity can be used in classrooms. Assess the results of a given assignment by peers. Analyze the assessments for any unforeseen results. Use a table of specifications. Create assessments before creating the instructional unit. And finally, provide more than one opportunity for students to prove their understanding. Here we have the references that we used in our presentation. We thank you very much for your time and attention. Are there any questions?